So I've had a student that is interested in the CaroCon, but they had some issues with certain positions. And I don't know if this first video is going to be able to help too much, because this is a bit of a speculative idea when playing against the advanced variation. And when you play the Karo Khan, the two most frequent variations that you have to play against is the classical, which is either with knight c3 or knight d2, in which case you follow by taking on e4, or the advanced. And the main line by far is with an early bishop f5, and then the secondary move is c5. But this move, which was introduced to me by Alabama national master Scott Baragona, he still plays this on a regular basis. You better watch out, though, because when I started doing some deep analysis of this position, it is about as busted as busted gets, to be fair. But I'll still play it as a surprise weapon, especially against lower-rated players or people who I don't think prepare and can get away with it. And as we'll see, we've got some games from uh, Bariv. We've got two games from him. Uh, very strong player of uh, the Karo Khan for years and years. But I will say that a secondary system, if you want to cut down on having to know a lot of theory, so an alternative to the alternative, if you will, is playing an early Queen B6. If you, you play an early queen b6, say, even here, this position already puts the question to white. And this is one of the things I like about rare moves, because when I played queen b6, oftentimes I'll get knight f3, in which case I can improve and put the bishop here with the pin, and you end up getting a fixed French structure where we play c5 on the next move. So uh, a move to think about as a reasonable alternative is queen b6 on move 3 with some flexible and interesting play. And it cuts down on the tremendous amount of theory on bishop f5. But now on to the show with knight a6. So first and foremost, if they capture on a6, we have this queen a5 check idea followed by queen takes a6, and I've often seen this type of structure emerge, where we've got the bishop pair, we're closing it off, we're going to play c5, and you get the fixed French. So now, how about another one? Let's go to knight f3. This is one of those key games, and this knight is going to go for a journey in the game most of the time to c7, and then wait and see where he's needed. But one of the things I really liked about this structure is the flexibility. And oftentimes this bishop will be on d3, but knight h6 is played, sometimes h5 is played, and then knight h6 to gain space. But in this case, black plays f6 straight away and gets this solid structure. I don't know so much about this, this move, bishop takes c7 for white, because this just seems very counterintuitive. You've got a good bishop. It's doing a job. Why trade it for the knight on c7 that's already moved twice? Doesn't make much sense. Now black has the bishop pair. And from here, I felt like black already had a decent edge and just converts without too much difficulty. Got the symmetrical position. But that's, that's the dangerous thing when you're playing against good players. They find that opportunity to mess with the structure, to make their pieces better than yours, and you just get worked. And that's what we see in this game. Black just did work all the way home. And I believe that was an interesting idea with the pawn push. Yeah, bishop check, and you can't stop with h3 with the beautiful finish. So, notice, solid, simple, that's the Karakhan in and of itself, but the bishop pair made all the difference there, and that key f4 move in the change in the pawn structure. So coming back, what about knight c3? Well, knight c3, there's no more queen a5 check, so we need to move the knight, 
then g6, and let's play for the space, and little shuffling about to get the knight on an excellent square. We're going to see it again. The best square for the knight is on f5, so let's get him in there. And again, we have this fixed French structure, and we have nothing to be concerned with on the king side. So now we can turn our attention to the queen side where we're getting our counterplay. Finally, making some headway. And all white is really able to do at this point is wait for this inevitable breakthrough, working the pin, got the gun going on the C file, and takes. It's the breaking point. It's not often you get to put everything on pre. Check. You cannot hide. And the big trade down results in white being wide open. And black is the win from a game from Munich 2009. Last but certainly not least, we've got c3, which is the main line. And we get to this same structure again, h4. All right, h5 to stop that type of nonsense. Knight f5 is where the knight wants to be. And another game where there was a structural deficiency and black is pretty safe so now we can open the position up and start attacking and I really liked these games by it, it's not yeah yes but Reeve. Reeve. and boom knight takes e2 so, overall, some ideas to play against the advanced variation of the Karl Khan. Knight e6, like I said, is a bit speculative, but play around with it. I do have a few games on the channel uh, that I've played in the past that are good model games. But, of course, I think when you look at it deeply with the engine, especially Stockfish 14, um, it doesn't have a lot of faith in Knight a6. Queen b6, on the other hand, as we'll turn on the engine right now, We'll see if it absolutely hates queen b6. It's got it at about a point as, as well, but knight a6, it's a point and a half. <laughs> Whereas bishop f5 and c5, it's pretty close to balanced, if not equal. But one of the beautiful things about chess is when you're playing something odd or a little bit offshoot, doesn't necessarily mean that your opponent's prepared for it. Have some fun. Surprise people every now and then. Why not?